everyone. I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And today's guest is Sam Body, He's vice president, sales, and co-founder at eClinical Works. Welcome, Sam. Hello, John. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thanks for having me and uh, glad to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have this discussion. You've made a, a big announcement, but before we get to that, tell us a little bit about yourself and ECW. Uh, I'm an engineer, uh, electronics and communication engineering. And uh, right after that, uh, I was passionate about building software and worked at a bunch of uh, different companies building software products, including Novell for some time. Ah. And then we started eClinical Works in 1999. That's awesome. One of my first trips as a tech person out of college was to Novell. Interesting, <laughs> first wow. Trade, like small world, huh? <laughs> it is a small world. You know, I was there uh, when Eric Smith was the CEO of, of the company. So you kind of, I kind of learned a lot of things. Uh, why not to be in uh, the proprietary world in uh -huh. technology world? Well, they made such a shift to open source. It's interesting. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I won't share my horror stories with Groupwise and uh, shared drives. But <laughs> it was, it's all part of the learning, right? So you, you know, ECW recently announced plans to invest $100 million in the Microsoft Cloud. Tell us about the process you went through to kind of make this decision and this investment. We've been, a, we've been a cloud company and, and mobile first and cloud first since year 2000 when we built eClinical Works. And uh, over, the, over the two decades, we built out a lot of infrastructure across the country, nine data centers, wow. 130,000 plus physicians using the technology on the cloud. And uh, five years ago, we started thinking we cannot be in, the, in this, in this uh, place of racking, stacking, managing hardware because it started becoming a little more challenging when, when we had some easier options that are out there. Uh, you know, the three public clouds that were gaining momentum. We all know the three, the, the Google, the Microsoft, and, and, and AWS. And we started the, the evaluation process uh, going down that journey, and it was not easy one. I think uh, what probably made it a little bit easier is to go from three to two because Google was not playing in the enterprise space at that time. And it came down to AWS and Microsoft Azure. Uh, one of the other things that probably helped in the evaluation process was we already had an established relationship with Microsoft. Uh, we've been using Microsoft SQL database for quite some time. We use their O365, Office 365 uh, inside our corporate um, uh, you know, offices and uh, uh, that certainly had a little bit of edge uh, on, on Microsoft, uh, so to speak. But what we uh, what we liked was how Microsoft came to the table with enterprise team, mm -hmm. being able to collaborate in our you know journey from you know the data centers that we had built to moving that data into Microsoft Cloud, and and I think that that probably uh, tipped that over to uh, the Microsoft's favor. Um, and uh, one thing I have to say, I mean, since we made that decision a few years ago, uh, we have never regretted, you know, making that decision. And uh, we've been uh, quite pleased and delighted uh, how Microsoft and, and its teams are working with us, uh, not in the initial lift and shift, but also adopting some of the native Azure capabilities into eClinical Works. Yeah, I want to dive into some of those details, but I find it interesting, you know, healthcare provider organizations were saying we want to get out of the data center business. It's interesting. That's kind of what you just said, right? Is, yeah. is that kind of the approach? Well, it's essentially the same thing, uh, but I think we had, uh, we probably had thousands of servers that we had stacked up over the last two decades. And, you know, that that's just because, you know, we started doing cloud before we had any of these club public yeah. options available. So I think um, you know, that's, that's a positive and, and a negative. You build a lot of inventory because of that. And if, if, if a company was, is, is starting today, they'll probably jump into the public cloud you know, without thinking twice. So we have to make that determination at, at one point. And uh, we felt that the future 10 years, you have to be in the public cloud to innovate faster and deliver faster to your customers. Yeah, 
it's like I told someone, no, there's no startup company building a client server application, right? Like, absolutely, it doesn't even exist, like the thinking, right? The way I see it is, you know, um, if you build a house today, you're going to connect your house to the electric grid, not have a generator power your, your house. You know, it's, it's, it's a different analogy. Or are they supposed to do solar now? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they still need to connect it to the grid, though. <laughs> or, or, yeah, that, possibly. No, I think that's interesting. Uh, so will this make ECW fully on the public cloud on Microsoft Azure? And, and you know, tell us more about, you know, You kind of said that there's other pieces of Azure, which I think many people don't understand that unless you're deep into cloud is how that it's not just a bunch of disks and storage and processing power, like the Azure cloud and all the public clouds are so much more than just you know, processing power or hosting anymore. So anyway, tell us, you know, where are you, are you fully on the cloud and what are some of the services you're leveraging? Yeah, we are, we are fully on the cloud now for our electronic health records. And uh, when it comes to compute storage, as well as database, all of them for electronic health record is on the cloud. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, I'll give you an example what happened last year. Um, you know, we wanted to introduce contactless check-in just like everyone else during the pandemic yeah. years. Uh, it was easier for us to use some of the native Azure services uh, mm -hmm. and, and introduce that capability and deploy it to all our customers. And we saw the power of the public cloud and power of all these capabilities out of the box uh, that, that we have available and, and uh, that just made the, the innovation a lot faster, the, the, the delivery timeframe you know, shrunk you know, probably you know, in a significant order of magnitude. Uh, that certainly uh, is just one, you know, uh, sneak peek into what what uh, we were able to, how we were able to benefit rather, uh, right in the early stages of our our uh, you know Azure adoption, and since then uh, we have gone into some of the other areas like the the AI or machine learning, which is certainly the, you know, the the uh, everyone want to do something in AI and machine learning, and you know we believe that. Uh, there are so many opportunities in that space, whether it is robotic process automation or uh, doing some, uh, some minor improvements in, in the check-in process, in the patient satisfaction, patient engagement aspects. You know, and, and I think there are so many you know, opportunities there. And we, want, we are certainly starting to use some of that. Uh, one of the technologies we recently deployed was the Databricks, which is now available on Microsoft Azure as a service and uh, which, which certainly um, increase the speed at which we can start analyzing data that's, that's available um, you know, on, on our Azure cloud. And, uh, and, and I think uh, you know, we're also seeing a potential in uh, IoT space. Mm -hmm. um, one, of the, one of the things that we are working on is bringing uh, ambient intelligence to our remote patient monitors as the data is flowing in from more than a million devices that, that are being used by patients that are connected with uh, eClinical Works today. And uh, you know, how, how do you bring that data and, and make that intelligent so that you provide that feedback to clinic, you know, clinicians and care managers or, or providers so that they can make, make better decisions and better manage the chronic conditions. So I think there is a lot of potential um, and we are still in the early stages of adopting, adopting some of these tools. Yeah, well, I'm glad you brought up AI. I think that's the big potential that the public cloud is going to offer over your own, you know, hosted system, you know, in the data center. So I think that's interesting. You've been embraced it that way. Is that the real advantage that you know you and also your users are going to gain access to and benefit from from being on the Azure cloud? Is is kind of those other innovations on top and your ability to deliver. Uh, a, a product quicker, you know, with more reliability, or how do you see the advantages to you and to your end users? I think for our end users, uh, the benefit is multifolds. Uh, first of all, they are getting higher availability uh, because we, we use uh, zonal disaster recovery as well as the regional or geo uh, redundancy as well from uh, Azure platform. And that gives them instant access to um, you know, multiple backups, uh, you know, in, in, yeah. in any type of disaster, that's number one. High availability, as I, as I talked about, that's number two. Number three is they're able to get 
these updates a lot faster and any innovation that we bring to uh, the market, uh, the customers are able to adopt them a lot faster as well. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, we, we find all of these pieces coming together uh, is, is helping customers get a better value at a lower cost point. And one of the things that we actually did or we did not do is increase the cost of our service. Even though it, the, our customers are getting elevated experience with Azure platform, we did not go back to our customers and say, here is you know, X percent increase in your ongoing monthly fees. Uh, I think our customers like the, 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 um, uh, the, the this kind of increased uh, service that they're getting, improved service that they're getting from eClinicalWorks uh, uh, at, at the same price point that uh, they, they've been paying for years. Yeah. It's interesting you didn't mention security. Uh, where do you sit on the, is the public cloud more secure? I mean, I, you're probably not going to say, yeah, our data centers are less secure. I don't know. It's a hard thing to admit, right? The, but uh, where do you sit on security wise? According to me, no data is secure, regardless of where it sits, whether it sits on your desktop or on the phone. Uh, in, in my view is you have to be ahead of, um, you know, 10 steps ahead, always thinking about security and and securing in your infrastructure and uh, and and have the have the culture of security built into your organization. Uh, we are you know ISO twenty seven thousand one as well as high trust certified organization, and we do take security seriously. And we don't talk about it because you know we are always thinking you know ten things uh, today. What we what we should be doing to protect infrastructure and data that we manage. Uh, and, and I think, uh, as I said, you know, uh, staying on the cloud uh, will allow us to, you know, implement some of these changes that we want to bring in uh, without having to wait. Um, you know, again, if I, if I have to deploy a, a, a new security policy that requires a new, uh, new component, uh, it could be a hardware or a software or a combination of that. I don't have to wait on the supply chain uh, to deliver me that that specific component. I think that definitely helps us to stay on the cloud to um, further secure the infrastructure, for, even from the security point of view. Yeah, it's such a great view that I think and most people don't appreciate that nothing is secure. It, it's just, can you make the walls high enough that someone wants to go somewhere else? <laughs> you know, if someone really wants to get in, they can, right? So I, I think that's, a, that's an important perspective that many don't understand. Exactly, and, and you don't know whether the other person has the drone so that the drone can fly, fly higher. <laughs> no, absolutely. I, mean, I think it's a constant battle that all of us are facing in, in absolutely. IT, so that makes sense. You know, how, how would you respond to those that maybe are slightly leery of cloud, that maybe don't understand, you know, the cloud and, and some of the details? You know, I think it's starting to dispel this. It's, you know, we all use it without even thinking about it, right? But how, how would you respond to those? Are there still, unfortunately, some out there that are like, mm, do I want to be on the cloud? You know, the, the, the view I take is, uh, you know, dinosaurs were extinct for a reason. Uh, you know, they couldn't adapt. And, uh, and I think if you, if you do not live on the cloud, then you become extinct uh, at, at, at some point very quickly. And the opportunities that exist uh, by just staying on the cloud are immense and, and sky is the limit is, is the way I put it. Uh, that's number one. Number two is if you want to stay uh, competitive in the marketplace, uh, you have to be on the cloud. Um, and you, as a result, you can innovate much faster compared to the, uh, you know, your competitors. And, uh, and also speed of deployment is also faster. So I think I don't see any reason if, if somebody wants to you know, stay away from the cloud, but but I think though you know for them, I would probably say you know they, they better you know uh, understand the, the value proposition and and uh, not stay in the in the in the stone age anymore. And and I think you know it it comes to uh, the, the similar arguments that people made. Yeah, I'm on BlackBerry and you are on iPhone. Hey, my device works better. But I think it just took a few more years for those diehard BlackBerry users to switch to maybe the, the Apple platform. And, and I think uh, the, the, the value proposition of staying together in, 
in the in the stack is uh, is going to bring you a, a lot more benefits. Uh, but you have to do it right. You have to do it right. Yeah, that analogy is great though, because the Blackboard, you know, BlackBerry keyboard is still better. But Steve. as a package, <laughs> the iPhone and eventually Android, you know, they were all way better. And, and I think that is a good comparison. You know, there Thank were you. certain things about on-prem that were better and nicer and more comfortable, but as a package, the cloud it just destroys it. So that, that's, that's a good comparison. Um, you know, you, as, as co-founder, you've been at ECW, you've seen a, a huge evolution rode the meaningful use wave uh, you know, <laughs> that we all rode, uh, but you've been through a lot. You know, obviously you just implemented the digital check-in, which is an interesting thing, but what, what other projects at ECW are you working on that you're excited about? Well, there are many interesting uh, innovations that are coming out. Uh, one of them is, you know, um, making it easier for patients to interact with their healthcare providers and, and uh, one of the challenges that we see in healthcare is staffing is one of the biggest challenges out there. Uh, we are trying to bring in some innovation to alleviate that concern, bringing in chatbots and capabilities on uh, the, the, the physician practices websites where patients should be able to do self-service uh, appointment booking, self-service check-ins and, and self-service payments and things like that. And, and there are endless possibilities there and doing a lot of work in that space. Uh, and in fact, our uh, national users conference that's coming up in, in the month of October, uh, we plan to announce some of these uh, innovations, um, including things like, uh, you know, collecting signatures, very, uh, very similar to what you and I uh, do yeah. use, use DocuSign and we, we bring in a technology that makes it easier to collect signatures even when patient is not in front of you and, and how do you collect wet signatures on, on, on these documents and, uh, and, and other innovations include um, on population health, uh, as well as, uh, you know, we continue to innovate on the usability on the, on the EHR side. Um, and there are about a thousand new uh, improvements that we have added uh, and that we will be introducing in version 12 at our national conference this year. Yeah. So are you going to build those chatbots and e-signature functions? Or are you going to partner? Or what's your approach there as far as partnership versus build? Well, I think our approach has always been anything that that excites us, we want to build it here. And um, uh, all these capabilities, I, I think one of the things that you will notice with eClinicalWorks and Hilo together, um, all of these capabilities have been built in-house and we have never acquired a company or, or, or products in the, in the past 22 years. And uh, if we like something that helps a physician and helps a physician's practice or patients uh, or payers, uh, we will build it in-house and, and provide the best user experience to our um, providers and patients and payers. Having said that, uh, we also are introducing our, our app store at the users conference that will allow the third party developers to come in and develop applications and deploy and make them available to our um, our customers. Excellent. Well, Sam, this was a lively discussion. I appreciate you sharing your insights and perspectives and how ECW is approaching the cloud and, and a number of other interesting innovations. So thanks so much. And thanks everyone for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, John.